Recording? Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Zoom Shiro. I'd like to thank again uh, Joe Nahari and Mayor Gabba for arranging this Shiro uh, and for um, Yonatan Lam for upgrading us for Zoom. I'd like to have, welcome everybody tonight to the Shiro. Uh, tonight we're going to be studying Parashat Vaishlach and also a bit of Chanukah, Echot Chanukah. And I would like to dedicate the Shiro, Lilu Nishmat, Rivka by China, Ruach Hashem Tenechene, Bagan Eden. Amen. And also like to wish for Fuah Shalema for all of Israel, um, all those who are ill, and especially also for Rufuah Shalema for Gabriel Elam, Batlea Malka, Ali Sheva, Bat Sheva, Bat Rivka. My mom, Tigon, Jni, Bat Ozet, Claudine, Bat Chana, Rucham. Kelna, Rufan Elam, Fuah Tenefesh, Fuah Taguf, Rufuah Kruva, Lavo. Would anyone like to add any names for Rufuah Shalema? Yes, Rav Rafael Amar. Rav Rafael Amar. Okay. So Bezat Hashem, we're studying Parashat Vayishlach. So it's a lot of action in this parasha with Esav and Yaakov. But I want to draw your attention to the, to the second episode in the parasha. Where Yaakov is, is, uh, is scared and he's left alone. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll study inside. I'm going to ask a few questions on the parasha. Um, and then Vizat Shem will answer them. This year was tonight uh, based on a lot of what I read from Avileza Biedemann in, in uh, Hebera Parasha. So I hope you can enjoy it. So first of all, the, if you look at Pasuk, Periklamet Bet, if you want to follow with me, Pasuk says, Vayira Yaakov Me'od. And Yaakov was very afraid. Vayetzer lo, Ve'achatzet ha'am asher ito. Why was Yaakov afraid? What was he afraid of? Being killed. Killed by who? By Esav. By Esav. Okay, so let's just explain where we're up to in the story. Uh, Yaakov goes to Lavan, he gets married, he has uh, 12 tribes, uh, he has like, like 11 children, and now he's coming back to Eretz Israel. Um, and Esav is waiting for him. After 34 years, he comes to seek his vengeance. He wants to get back. He doesn't forget what his brother did to him. And he comes to confront him with 400 men. And the Pasuk says, Vayar Yaakov Me'od. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to just explain the simple meaning of the parasha. Then we're going to ask a, a few questions. And then we're going to look deeper into the parasha um, to get deep understanding of it. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And Bezat Shem connect also to Hanukkah. Okay. So simple meaning is he got scared of Esav. Esav is coming to kill him with 400 men. Um, and he decides to split the camp into two. Then after the Torah tells us that he's crossing over the, um, let me just find the Pasuk. He sends in presents. He crosses over a river. And then Yaakov goes back. And here's the main pasuk. We start from here to parasha. If you want to follow parashat Lamed Bet, pasuk Chafalev. What does that mean? Yaakov was remaining alone. What does that mean? What does that mean? He was left alone and vulnerable. And then he was confronted with somebody. Who is this Ish? Ish Any suggestions? There are many explanations to it. Many right? explanations. Nahon. Well, so from. Right. Yeah. Uh, very good. So Rashi says, like Gila told us, Sarosh Esav, he was confronted by an angel. So this way, a person is called Ish. It's not really an Ish. It's really Sarosh Esav. He coming to fight with Yaakov Avinu. And when he saw on his own, he's vulnerable. He comes to attack him. Yavek means to fight. Like Rashi says, like two people fighting, um, he says two pshatim, either avak 
like the dust raising up. Avak is a combat. So late into the night till the dawn. And he saw that Yaakov was unbeatable, this angel, Sarosh Yaakov. And he, then the simple meaning is he, he hit him in his uh, thigh. He says he can't win. He says, Let me go. And he says, Let me go. He says, Let me go. He says, Let me go. He says, uh, you're leaving? I want, before you leave, I want a bracha. See, it's very interesting asking for a bracha from the angel of Esav. I don't know what bracha he's going to give him. And he says, What's your name? Now, there's a lot of strange things in this. We're not going to explain everything, but we're going to explain, uh, we're going to explain it a lot, a lot, a uh, few questions. Okay, maybe. He says, what's your name? He says, my name is Yaakov. My name is Yaakov. He says, I have a better name for you. This parasha, this is the episode, is where we get our name. Am Yisrael, Eret Yisrael, Bnei Yisrael. It's from here. Otherwise, it will be Bnei Yaakov. Think about it. Eret Yaakov would be that. From this pasuk, because this is the pasuk, Ki Sarita Im Elokim Batuchal. Because you overcame and you overpowered against angels. Elohim is another name for Malachim. Ve'iman Hashim, and also against people. Ve'tuchal, and you, you are a winner. That is what Yisrael means. You're a champion. <laughs> you're a winner, and you're a winner over, over, over angels and over gods. And that's who you are. That's what I'm giving you as a new name. Okay. Then Yaakov says to him, Ve'ishal Yaakov, now you're giving me a name. What's your name? Then what's your name? That's a very unusual question, you know. You finish fighting with somebody. Usually, you know, you, you fight with someone, you know what the name they are. Hey, after you ask him what's his name. Why do you ask for my name? And he gives him a bracha. Then it says, Vayikra Yaakov, Shema Makom. Anybody remember what's the name of the Makom? What's the name of the place? He gives that name. So this is a very historical uh, event. I get my changed name, my name changed. I'm going to give it a name. What's the name? Anybody remember? Pasuk. Begins with Penny, pay, Penny L. Peniel, why Peniel? I'm going to call it the name of the place Peniel, which means face or facing God, because I saw God face to face, but then I tell Nafshi and I got saved. And then the sun came out, and he was limping on his thigh. And then the last pasuk, Al Ken Lo Yachlu Bnei Yisrael. For this reason, Am Yisrael or the children of Israel, Bnei Yisrael, they don't eat Gidan Asher. Does anybody know what's Gidan Asher? What what is? Gidan Asher. He says we don't eat Bnei Yisrael. Don't eat Gidan Asher. One of the things you don't eat. Do you know what it is? Gidan Asher. So Gidan Asher is is the sinew part of the thigh of the animal. It's part of it that we don't eat. And you don't know about it because when you buy kosher meat, they take it out and you get the good meat. Yeah, you don't get this, uh, the gid. But what's the reason we're not allowed to eat this part of the thigh? We don't eat it ill to this day. Because the angel of Esav, he got Yeah, yeah but, but, but some, some parts of it. Ah, welcome, Yaakov Gabay. Thank you. Please tell us. Yes, Yaakov. Because, uh, because Safa, Moroccans or Safadim know oh, how, how to Moroccan. do Nikur. Yeah, we do Nikur, yeah. They do Nikur, and, and you have to be specialist. Here, 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 I don't know in Israel, but here, obviously, they don't know how to do it, or they don't want to learn how to do it. So they don't eat it. Yeah, in so France, we don't eat the whole, the whole bag. In France, in France it, 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 it's, it's a, I mean, uh, it's, you eat a Syrian steak, you, you, you don't know what you're eating. You don't know what you're eating? 
It's amazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's the best steak. Ah, uh, the best steak. Okay, so yeah. Yago's referring to the, the back part of the behemoth, the, mm -hmm. the second part of the animal, the hind legs. That's where you need to take out the, the sinews, which is the gid, which we're not allowed to eat. So in Israel, you have a nikur. A nikur is a person who knows how to take it out, and then you can eat the rest of the meat, and Yaakov testifies that it's very delicious. However, in England, they just don't bother with it. They just chop off the end, and they don't touch any of the meat because it has the gidan and inside it. Actually, let, let, let me tell you a joke. When, uh, when Dan Toledano wanted to teach, uh, wanted to encourage it to be, to be done in England, he was told by some Dayanim, how, how, how it's a tradition that we didn't have for thousands of years. How, how can you bring it suddenly? So he, which, to which he answered, hold on, we didn't, we didn't have the Yeruf for, for, for time. You know, and you got the Yeruf now, so what's the difference? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a joke. Never mind. So thank you for that one second. OK. So now, does anybody have any questions? On the episode, the clear understanding of the episode. I'm going to say again, Yaakov is scared from Esau. He splits the camp. He goes back. He's left on his own. He's vulnerable. Comes a man to attack him. He comes and beats attacked by an angel of Esau. He fights through the night. The angel sees that he can't get him. He says, listen, you're unbeatable. And then he hits him on the thigh. He hits him on the thigh and then he says, uh, let me go. He says, no, tell me what's your name first. Give me a bracha. He says, okay, what's your name, Yaakov? I'm going to change your name to Israel." And then Yaakov gives a name to the place and he calls it Penuel, Peniel, because he saw Hashem face to face. And that's why we don't eat the Gidan Asher till this very day. All the, I can't, lo yuchlu b'nei Yisrael at Gidan Asher. Is that clear? Any questions so far? No. Okay, everything's understood. So I'm going to ask you 10 questions on this episode. 10 questions on this, and I want to see if you can, anyone can tell me any of the answers. But tell me which one's your favorite, okay? Joe, you're going to listen to the 10 questions. You tell me which one's your favorite question. So first question is, what's the difference between Vayera Who's good in Hebrew? He says he was sorry. Again, Vayetzer. So the Pusuk, the Pasuk, Vaya Yaakov Meod, Vayetzer Lo. Vayetzer, he was sorry that he would need to kill. He was sorry? What do you mean that he was sorry? What's the difference between them? No, one, one was afraid to be killed. The second, he was, he was sorry that he, he may be required to kill. Someone else. Oh, so, so you're saying one is to be, what do you mean, what do you mean to be sorry? He was sorry, he was sorry that he, 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 he would need to kill someone else. He was afraid that he would, might, might be killed and he was afraid that he might need to kill. Yeah. Okay, so that's a nice chat. He's telling us the difference. Uh, it's simple translation is Vayira is to be afraid. It's the Pachad of Yaakov, he was very afraid. But Yitzhelo, and he was uncomfortable, he was distressed, and uh, he thought maybe he would have to kill. So Gila told us a nice shot over here. But what, what does really mean these two things? What was he scared about? And in fact, uh, Rashi says, uh, what Gila said, mm -hmm. So in fact, that is Rashi from the Menos Tanchuma. He was also worried about, about Esav's Kibbut uh, Oh, so very good. So now this is my next question, or really answering. What was what, he scared about? Why is Yaakov scared? Who is stronger over here? Yaakov or Esau? Who is stronger? Who is, who is stronger? Yeah. It, it's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. But in fact, Yaakov was very strong. And in fact, that he was, Rashi tells us he was scared that maybe he would kill others. So obviously he was capable of doing it. And he was very strong. We see Vayagare Evan. there was a stone that none of the shepherds could lift, which was covering the well. And they had to wait till all of the shepherds gathered together and then they managed just to like pop it off. Yeah, they are good at heaven and, and uh, uh, Yaakov in the comes, pops it open like, uh, like a, a bottle of Coke. Yeah. Oh, cut. He was a powerful man, Yaakov. 
What was he scared of over here? So Yaakov told us, Yaakov Gamma, that he was scared of Yaakov's mitzvot, of Esav's mitzvot, because Esav had the schut of living in Eretz Israel. And in, indeed, it's tremendous mitzvah of living in Eretz Israel, and also mitzvah of Kibbut Avem. Two things that Yaakov missed out for 34 years. So that's already an answer. But if we're going to the question, why was he scared? Let me add on another question. Okay, Joe, we're on now question number two. That Hashem promises Yaakov, Ushmaticha bechol Hashem telech. Which means God says, I will give you protection. So wherever you're going, I'm with you. Okay? So now if I tell you, Joe, you know, you have to go out to, I don't know, if you, I don't know if you, where you got scared to go in London, but there's some scary places, yeah? <laughs> there's some places you don't want to be at night. But if I tell you, listen, I'm giving you bodyguards, I'm giving you protection, you're going to be escorted by a police escort. Yeah, but if, okay. if, you, if, you, if safe. you're safe. It's not exactly what it's written. The Pasuk says, so the promise was that Hashem would be with him until he returns. Yes. I'm not sure what you're asking, Gilad. Now he's back then, so that he doesn't have the protection anymore. Or was it Fred? Why? That... Why? Because that, that, that was the promise. And the promise is I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Uh, okay, so he's on his way back now. No, now he's in back. That's it. He crossed the river. He's back. No, uh, no before, before he goes... Uh, there's another pasuk. Oh, let me just find it again. Hashem promises him again when he tells him to leave. Go back, I will be with you. Yeah, but you also have the katon to be called hasadim. Oh, very good. Then, so Yaakov's got an answer. You're already going to the answers over here. Okay, so I was going to ask a question. Why is Yaakov scared? So Yaakov said he's scared from the chasadim because he's had already so much from God. Well, do you want to explain your question, Yaakov? What do you mean? And I leave it to you. you carry on. Okay, so I'm going to, question number one is what's the difference between Vayar and Vayetzer? Second question is what was he scared of? Was he afraid? He's a strong man. He was a powerful man. And he was promised by God, I will escort you. I will protect you. I will look after you. Question number three. Okay, and whatever reason you want to say why he's scared. But Hashem promised that he's going to protect him. So what's this Yerech Yaakov about? Okay, he wins, but he gets injured. <laughs> he walks out and he's injured. He says, Vayitzah Hashem Esh. Vayizach Hashem Esh. Kashe Avar. V'hu Tzolea. V'hu Tzolea al Yerecho. He walks out injured. He said, God, you said you're going to protect me. Where did you go? So, okay, he's scared maybe from sin or for others, but if he was promised, so why does he come out injured? Why does Hashem not protect him? That's question number three. You like yeah. that question, Joe? Yeah? Yeah. So far, that's your favorite? Okay, I want to ask Joe for his favorite after number 10. Question number four, okay. How, how do you fight with an angel. So I can understand if you're a man and you're a strong man, so you can fight another strong man. Maybe you can fight uh, a, a beast, an animal, something which is physical. But when you're talking about Sarosh al is an angel, how, how do you fight him? Like, what, what weapons do you use? So yeah. I, 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 did he know that? Did, did he how, know you gonna, how are you going to fight him? What did you mean? He, he, came dressed, he came dressed up as a little wrestler and tried to fight Yaakov? What's the battle over here? Do you know how, how do you fight oh, with a monarch? He changed the, the, the faces, his face changed. He changed oh. his face. So he put on the disguise, he transformed, okay? He did an X-Men, calm down, and now he's fighting Yaakov. Well, what are we talking about? We're not, it's not talking about a mutation. Yeah, it's an angel. It's something which is spiritual. Something which is Ruhani. How are you gonna fight that? Okay, we're not talking about a superhero. You're not fighting something like that. That's a physical being, yeah? 
uh, it's in the imagination. By here, we're talking about a malach. Well, how do you fight with the malach? That's question number four. Question number five. Question number five. The pasuk says, um, "Who did he fight?" Viavek Ishimo. Okay. So, which said, which means man, and Rashi explains means Saro So, what's the name of the place that he calls it? Peniel. Peniel. Why does he call it Peniel? Because he faced God. Well, what does it mean he faced God? Because if he was fighting an angel, where was God in the way? He didn't face God, he faced an angel. He should have called it Peni Malach. Yeah, mm. or Peni Ish, or Peni Malach, or Peni Sar Shal Esav. Where, where, where does Elohim come? It's just confusing. You're reading it. It starts off by Ish. You're telling me he's talking about Malach. And then he finished about talking God. So he saw God's God. Angel. He's, was he fighting God? Or was God's angel? So just telling me it's God's angel. But it says writing mm -hmm. Elohim Pani Mel Pani. So there is question number five, and is it a bit, a bit mysterious or unusual over here? We're holding with the questions. Question number six. Now, this is really strange. I just observed, made this observation today. I don't know if you ever noticed it when you're reading Parasha. And when I read it out for you, I, I read it quickly. I don't know if you noticed it. Anybody still with me? Yeah. He saw he, he couldn't beat him. Vayiga bekaf yerecho. What does mean Vayiga? He touched. He touched. So now touching, okay, can touch. Doesn't hurt if you touch. And then it's unless maybe it's he's made a fire and if he touches you like he burns you just by touching you or something like that. But it doesn't seem like that. It just says Vayiga the Kaf Yerecho. And then it says Vataka Kaf Yerech. So it's like two stages. He he touched it and then Vataka Kaf Yerech. So what does that mean? He touched it and then he hit him. Like if, if you're fighting. So, you, you know, you punch him by by the car, what's this like touching and then and then like you're grabbing and then you're punching? What, what's going on over there? Like, that's the only thing you can do the whole fight. He's fighting all night and then he gets in one punch, and it's not even a punch, it's a touch. And then, so what's this two stages going on over here? And then, like that question? That was my question. Also, grammatically, I don't know how is your grammar over here, but if you want to say that the angel hit Yaakov, what's the word you should use? Vayitka, no? Vayitka is, and he struck. Vateka, no, Vateka. Vateka kafirach is like it got hit or got, it got uh, damaged, it got injured. Not Vayitka. So that's question number seven. Question number eight. Why, why are they going all night and it's like the deadline is Adalot HaShachar? Even before they start fighting, this is Vayavetel Yaakov Levado, he's on his own. And then this is Vayavik Ishimo, and the first Pasuk, he says Adalot HaShachar. Then he says Vayakilo Yochalo, and he couldn't do it, and they, they struggled all night, and then he hit him on the thigh, and the whole story afterwards. But in the very opening of the story, it says that he was fighting him all night. Adalot Hashachar. Now, why does the Torah tell us that? It's like there's a limit. You, you know, you have a fight here. Okay, we've got 90 minutes. Go. That game's starting. Adalot Hashachar. That's the deadline. End of fight. Who's the winner? And that's game over. Champion. Now, the fights don't go like that. If you're attacking somebody, you want to win, so you fight either you know till you till the end, either till you lose or till you till he till you win or till you lose. What's the deadline? You have to go now. It's, you know, almost like a, maybe like a vampire. You know, the sunlight comes out. Okay, boom, he has to go. Yeah, it's like the dark force of the night. When the sun rises, he has to vanish. What's the talk going on over here? Why is this fight with Yaakov? It's in the night. And as soon as the sun rises, the game's over.
Do you have any suggestions? Maybe at night he can see him properly. Thank you. What the the malach? Yeah. No, no. The no, malach no. has yeah, well, he, he has night vision. Can can see? No, no. The, uh, Yaakov can see the the malach. Oh, Yaakov can't see him, and yeah. now the light is can see him, so he's like afraid that Yaakov is going to see him. So when he's dark, he's got like the surprise uh, of uh, night. That seems to be over here, but here it seems like the, the whole deadline was until the morning. What's going to be in the morning? What does it represent night? What represents morning? Uh, thank you for the idea, Yosef. Um, where am I up to question number? Nine. Thank you. Seven or eight? Yeah, that was number eight. Why, why was it? No, number seven was the language of Vataka and Vayitka. should say, and he smote, not he got hit. Number eight was why till a lot of shakhar, and number nine. And this is, I think, maybe my favorite. Um, yeah. Why, why did, why? Al-Ken lo yukhlu b'nei Israel. Who win, who's the winner of this fight? Who's the winner? Who's the winner? No one. Who? No one. Nobody. Why? Technically, Yaakov. Yaakov. Because he says to him, why was he called? I'll give you a name, Israel, because you are a winner. By Israel. You managed to fight and no, it's overcome it's and be strong. Again? It's not that, that you won. You didn't lose. It's not the same thing. But the, the, does the Pusuk say, I'm going to call you a non loser and that's your name? No. Ki Israel Shemecha, Ki Sarita Melokim, but Tuchal. Tuchal means you are Matzliach. He managed you to fight against and overcome men, Imelokim, Imanashim. I'm just saying now, it doesn't say, it says Ki Sarita Melokim. Sarita means you, 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 it Gabarta. You managed to overcome the challenge. It Gabarta Imelokim. So, literally, translation over here means Ki Sarita Melokim. You fought against God or the, the angels of God. So you are the champion. That's what it means. So if Yaakov is the winner over here, why can Bnei Israel? it says, Al-Kain, Bnei Yisrael, lo yechlod gid al-Nasheh. He's fighting all night with an angel. He comes up with a, with a little injury, minor injury with a limp. Okay, an angel gives him a name. You are the champion, Sarita Emelokim. He changes your name forever. And the only thing we're going to remember from that is that we can't eat the Gidah Nasheh. Like that's the failure. That's like the Achilles heel. The only small thing that he got off him, the small limp, that's what we have to remember. We're the winners. We're the champions. We are Bnei Israel. Call me something after the Bnei Israel, after the, after the winner, after the champion. Think about it. You have somebody who's an undefeated champion. So in one fight, he got a small injury and he still became the winner. So he's known as the world you know, undefeated champion. And and for generations, the only thing you're going to remember is like the, the minor, you know, you know, he lost in the first round. That, that was all the last round. <laughs> how, how, how do you explain that? And also, email Okim means with God. It doesn't really mean against God, but It should be remembered for the success, not for the, the failure. That was the one part that he got beaten by. Remember your victory. And here you think for generations, what you're gonna remember? The, the fact that he got you on the on the Gida Nasha, on the Yerech. Can we have a suggestion over there from the crowd? This was my favorite question. Any suggestions for that last question? I mean, it's sort of the way of the Torah to, to bring our failures forward a lot. Why? Well, do you want to remember failures? Yeah. you want to remember successes? Or to, well, to be able to learn from them. So we, 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 we look back oh. at everything happened in the past. Okay. So when your father tells you there's good steaks at the back of the animal and you say you can't eat it, does that make you want to, you know, make yourself better, remember the failures? They're like, what would you learn from that? What are you supposed to learn from that? To not give in. That's 
not not given to temptation. To temptation? What in what because of the Yaakov? We're supposed not to remember this episode of Yaakov. Because we of? can't eat that part of the of the of the of the, the animal. And there's a lot of things we can't eat. We can't eat meat and milk. Yeah, we can't eat uh, other things. Not, what's specific about this one that makes us better people? And that brings me to my final number 10 question. Okay. And if I put it bluntly, after nine questions, number 10 question is, who cares? <laughs> That's the question. If I put it, if I put it a bit nicely, means what's the difference? And that's what I mean to ask. Yeah? You know, you ask me, Rabbi, nine questions about this puzzle. Uh, what do I care why Yaakov was here? Why we changed his name? What? Everything has relevance. What's the relevance? That's not the question number 10. What do we learn from this? Why did I come here to the shield to hear Rabbi Netanah ask me these 10 questions? Okay, would you like a quick summary of the 10 questions? And yes. And then a uh, mm-hmm. quick reminder, and then just gonna, Joe's going to tell us his favorite. Question number one. What's the difference between Vayar and Vayetia? He was afraid and he was scared. And we had one answer from Gilad and Rashi. Second reason, what was he afraid of? God said, I'll protect you. I'm going to give you a uh, royal escort, uh, bodyguard protection. Question number three. If you promised him protection, so why didn't you protect him? Why does he come out injured? Question number four, how do you fight with the angel? You send him an angel, why, how do you fight an angel? What's the what's the the battle? Question number five. If he says he with the angel, so why does he call it Peniel? That I faced God face to face. He didn't face God. He faced the angel. So Joe said it was an angel of God. That is definitely an explanation. And then Vayiga Bekafiyarecho. This seems two stages. He touched his thigh and then he hit his thigh, or his thigh got injured. So what's the two stages? He touched it and then he got injured. Question number six. Question number seven, and it says, Vateka kafirachirachor. It just seemed to go out of injured. It didn't see that he injured his thigh. It should say, Vayitka or Vayake, but Vateka, Vateka, it means it just got injured. Number eight, why does it say like the time limit, the game was to Allah to the night? So Yosef suggested it was at night time when he was vulnerable. That's when he came. I'm suggesting. What is telling us the significance? In the morning, he has to leave. And that's the end of the game, end of the fight. Question number nine, which is my favorite. Why are we remembering over here, you know, the, the only one minor, uh, small uh, victory, consolation victory of the angel that he hit the thigh? For that generation, because of this episode, where we are the winners, we are the champions. You know, you should give us like a free, uh, free food that we should eat to remember this night. You know, Yaakov wins the angel. We get to eat, I don't know, extra donuts or something on, you know, on this parasha. Why, why are we telling you? We should remember the, the victories, the miracles that God did for us. Remember the things that, that we got lost and he's injured? Um, question number 10 is, what's the meaning for us? Okay, Joe, your favorite question? The, the, the two-part um, touch and then hit. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That was your favorite. So everyone has their own favorite for the question. I now, think it was one move. You think it was like a one move? Is a Krav Maga? Is a <laughs> We're gonna I'm see. Not... So obviously yeah. over here, there's a lot. There's a lot, something much which is a lot deeper over here, and we have to understand it. So I'm not gonna explain everything, but there's some things I do want to share with you, and we can understand. Um, and you know, appreciate the Torah is much more d- depth to what we see to what we, we get taught maybe as children in school or to what we read from the Torah. And without studying its depth, it gets a totally different meaning. And we just ask 10 questions, which maybe most people don't even think about. And it's good, simple, straightforward questions, no, nothing. Uh... So let me start with like the, the first question, the answering the questions, okay? So I'm going to share with you a few ideas, and then we're going to put it all together and try and answer all of them and connect it also to Hanukkah as well. Maybe that can be question number 11. What's it got to do with Hanukkah? So let's start with uh, Midrash. Midrash and Bereshit Rabbah. Um, and like I said, this most of it is based from the Sefer Be'er Parsha. He doesn't ask the questions, but I just made to make it interesting. I made it into questions. So he probably starts off with the Midrash in Bereshit Rabbah in the Spex Parsha. He says, what does it mean? 
ויוותר, ויוותר יעקב לבדו. He was left on his own. Midrash says, you know what it says in Levado? Pasuk in Yeshaya, V'nisgav Hashem Levado. Yeah. And God is almighty on his own. Like Yaakov is on his, was left on his own, God almighty is on his own. Ma kadosh baruch hu katuv bo, V'nisgav Hashem Levado. Af Yaakov, V'yvater Yaakov Levado. So, what does that mean? God is on, God is on his own. Yaakov was on his own. And the idea over here is that Yaakov was left on his own. He was tested over here, faced and confronted with his maybe deep, the deepest fear with Esav or with the Sarosh el Esav. And Yaakov was saying, he, you know, he wasn't scared of fighting Esav. He was very strong on his own. You could give him up in a good fight. And like Gilad said, he was scared that maybe he would kill others. But he was maybe scared of the, of the, the schut, the merit that Esav had. That he lived in Eretz Yisrael for 34 years, that he honored his parents for 34 years. He was missing those two mitzvot. Even though he kept all the mitzvot, but he was still missing out on two major mitzvot. And now he gets confronted with Sarosh al Esav. Much more than just fighting Esav, facing Esav, was facing his, his angel, this spiritual angel. Now, what was the fight over here? So, says Rabbi Yitzhak Mekarmana, one of the Hasidic rebels. And here it is the opening to understand the whole parasha. Yaakov Avinu, he didn't see before his eyes uh, the Shavu Shel Esav. Ela ra'a Kadosh Baruch And here you see, when you face your biggest fear, how do you face your fear? Okay, some people, what are they afraid of? Okay, some people are afraid of dogs. Some people are afraid of the dark. People are afraid of heights. Everyone has their fear. What's your biggest fear? So, here telling us that when you face the, your biggest fear, you see, you only see God. Same as Mona David. Even when I go in the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for I know that you are with me. That's what David Amelach said. And I, I will give you an analogy from the Hasid Mi Bardichov, Rabbi Akkadish Mi Bardichov. He gives a mashal. He said there's a father, and he wanted to teach his son not to be afraid of anything. So what did he do? He got dressed up. He took a bear skin. He got dressed up with a bear, put on a mask. And he's walking around the sun, he's making noises like a bear. Uh, uh. Yeah, and he's trying to scare the, the boy. And the boy looks around, what's this noise? It looks like a bear. Huh? And he can see it's his dad. Yeah. He's like, Abba, I can see it's you. You know, it's a game. He like laughs at him. And he's like, oh, oh, making sound like a bear, trying to make him scared. You know, in the beginning, he's a bit scared, but then after he get, gets the game, and he says, yeah, dad, I can see it's you. What's the, going to be the response? What's the father going to do? Takes off the costume. That's and... a game over. Yeah, that's right. It's me. Come, give me a hug. Give me a smile. Hugs his father. I know yeah, that's right. It's me. Nothing to be scared of. Hey, isn't that beautiful, Mashal? We, we spoke about a few weeks ago, the Rav Chaim Velozhin. Rav Chaim Velozhin says that the... Enod Milvado is a skula. The, the whole world is nothing, only a Kaddish Baruch Hu. There is no other existence apart from the Kaddish Baruch Hu. That means God doesn't just exist. God is existence. Every order of existence comes from God. Otherwise, there would not be any concept of space, no concept of time, no concept of matter. It's all within a Kaddish Baruch Hu. If you, if, you, if you think about it, we're all part of like an imagination or in, a, in our Kaddish Baruch Hu's mind. But even that's a wrong analogy. But well, there's nothing else. When you think about that, you cannot come to any harm. Now that's a big Yechidosh. It's not just what David HaMelech said, I will fear no evil. I will fear no bad. But it means no bad will actually come to you. That is the Yechidosh. And in fact, we say in every uh, tefillah of Shabbat, 
מזמור שיר ליום השבת. כי הנה אויביך, אדוני, כי הנה אויביך יאבדו, יתפלדו כל פועלי האבן. You remember this? כן, מתי אני כן קני. Now, does that make any sense? Let me just read the pasuk. I never even noticed it before. כי הנה אויביך השם. Your enemies, הנה אויביך השם, כי הנה אויביך יאבדו. So it literally means the enemies of Hashem will be disappeared. But if you look at the words literally, it can be, it seems like they're saying, הנה אויביך, your enemies are Hashem. כי הנה אויביך, Hashem. הנה אויביך יאבדו. Now, according to the concept we're saying now, of Rabbi Chaim Velazhen, if you look at your enemies, and whatever might they be, okay, it could be an illness, a virus, uh, uh, I don't know, a legal case, uh, whatever a person's enemy is, and you face it, you realize that all your enemies, there's no real enemies, it's just all Hashem. It's just a disguise, God disguising up as a bear, as a father. Then, all your enemies will go. That is the Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov says, just how, that's how you have to look at it. There's nothing else in the world. There's only Hashem. And when we just call out, Avi, Avi, Avinu, our father, we didn't need to fight. So that was the secret to the Chashmonaim. How did the Chashmonaim win the army? Do you know how many people there were in the Greek army? Do you know how many people? Can you think about the numbers? We're talking about five Maccabees, maybe 12 Maccabees, 12. How many were there in the, in the Greek army? Now, nowadays we have armies, we have much smaller men because the fights with the machines, you fight with planes, with tanks. So you just need men to move around the, the machines. But in the olden days, you need to fight. You need each man to throw the arrow, to throw the spear. 22,000 men just with archers. And spearmen, according to one record, 10 million men in the army of the Greek army, great Greek army which ruled the world, 10 million men against 12. It's no numbers. <laughs> it's nothing. Uh, you can't even begin to think about that. So obviously it's not the men which are fighting, it's Hashem. Hashem is fighting all the, the 10 million. He's creating their existence and he can stop creating their existence. It's not like how is Hashem going to be them? Just stop thinking about them and they stop existing. That's it. There's, not, there's nothing more to it. The Maccabim, the Chashmonaim. Only Bishrut, the Bitachon in Akadosh Baruchu, that's how they managed to get the, to, to see miracles. Matityahu, Kohen Gadol. They all, Matityahu, Vanav Kohanim. Kohen, what's Gematria Kohen? Here's the maths. Kohen. Gematria. It's an easy one. Kohen. What's the Gematria of Kohen? 75. Kohen is 75. Kaf is 20. He is 5. 50 is noon. 75. Bitachon. What's the Gematria of Bitachon? Go on. Can you work it out? What's Bitachon? The same thing is you have Chamesh. It's 75. Bitachon and Kohen is the same. The way they were Kohanim were going out with Bitachon in Akadosh Baruch Hu. And that's why we, when we, we stick in, in the ways of the Chashmonaim, of the Kohanim, and we have Bitachon in Akadosh Baruch Hu, we can see miracles. Hashem, And um, I read this the uh, a go on of Yosef Hal Halprin from Manchester. He wrote a book and he said he looked at the old uh, Kitve Yad transcripts, transcripts, old scripts from uh, in museums that from the Megillat Hashmonaim said Maccabi, in fact, wasn't spelt with a calf like Maccabi or Maccabi Games or Maccabi Bira or Maccabi Kupat Cholim. Maccabi was spelt with a kuf. Maccabi. And he says that on the flag of the Chashmonaim, or on the, side, the symbol, 
was Maccabi, Meolam Kivinu Becha Hashem. Kivinu is, we have hope in you. It's because only of the hope that they have in a Kadush Baruch Hu. That's how they were able to win. Rabim Biyad Menatim. Giborim Biyad Chalashim. Biyad is Biyad in the hand of Hashem. That's how they all came to win. Only with the Tachon of Kadush Baruch Hu. Of course, you can't trust in yourself. How powerful can you be? 12 people, the strongest 12 men. You can't fight an army of 10 million Greeks. But you don't need to fight. It's even fighting 10 men or 10 million. If Hashem is with you, it's the same. The Ramban says that when we like the menorah, we write, we say Yoshev Beseter Elyon. That's a minhag. And what is Yoshev Beseter? Yoshev Beseter means he sits hiding. God is hiding in the world. He's hiding behind the politicians, behind the, the world uh, armies, legions, behind the viruses. It's only God. And God is hidden, he's Yoshev Beseter. And that's what we say in the Megillah, in, 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 the, in the Hanukkah, when we light in the darkness. We write, when it's dark, that's when we light. At the time of night, when he was fighting the angel. That is the time when you light the Hanukkah. And you're supposed to stay and stick to Kodesh Baruch Hu. So that is what Yaakov did. How did he fight this angel? How do you fight an angel? The only way you fight angels is like you fight your enemies. Is you realize that there's nothing else. There is no enemy. There's only God. When you say and you see Hashem before your eyes, you don't see any other enemies. There are no enemies. Now I'm going to tell you this tremendous Chiddush. And I think this is going to answer the question beautifully. Vayira. Vayar Yaakov Ma'od, he was very afraid. Vayetzer lo, and he was uncomfortable and he was pained. Says the Bani Atosfot, B'Shem Divrei Agrak B'Chala. Kishara Yaakov, she'ole more o marachah b'levavo. He said, why am I scared? Zeh gufa v'yetzer lo. He felt uncomfortable. Why was he scared? He said, I'm a tzaddik and I believe in Hashem and I'm scared of myself. And not milvado. And he said he felt bad with himself. Why was he feeling scared, you know, of himself? Why am I scared of my brother? It's embarrassing that a tzaddik that is scared of somebody who is basar b'dam. You're only scared of from a kaddish baruch There is a two parts. The question, first question we had. Ve'yitzer ve'yar. He was afraid from itzav, and he felt sorry and he felt bad that why am I scared from itzav? I shouldn't feel like this. And then that's when he overcame himself and he became strong. He said, I'm not going to fear yourself. Only for Hashem. And he said, really, Hashem promised him protection and he really gave him protection. And when he, when Yaakov saw Hashem, the Malach can't touch him, can't do anything to him. Why? That's Hashem said, I'll protect you. You just come with me, I will protect you. But as long as you see me, as long as you are with me, I will be your protection. And here we see a tremendous chidush. And you come here tonight, you say, well, this is the chidush. Fear, that is a danger. You see that only because Yaakov feared from his sub, that's why the Malach hit him. This is, says the Riva. Perush Riva on Parashat Bereshit. He says, you know why Betaka Kafir Yaakov? So God promised him I'll protect you. Only because he was scared of itself, that's why. That's why the Malach got him. And he said the same thing we found by Moshe Rabbeinu. When Hashem said to him, I will be with you. And then he's Bamalon, but Derech, he was scared of Paro, and then Shalachna Beyad Hashem Tishlach. So we see that. The whole episode of, of uh, uh, this is a beautiful question. This is going to answer Joe's question. Rav Kadosh Mizuchka, Sefer Nachal Yitzchak. He says, "Vayar ki lo yochal lo." What does that mean? That the angel couldn't touch Yaakov because he knows that the God didn't allow him as long as he was stuck to to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. But for one time, he had a fear of Esav. That's when he got him, and even then. He says, What happened? What did he do? He had a tactic. He just touched him. He touched him, but he held on to him. 
And then Yaakov said, why are you holding on to me? And he was holding him tight, but he wouldn't hit him because Hashem didn't allow him to hit him. He said, you can't touch him, you can't hurt him. As long as he was thinking of being his davuk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he doesn't fear him, you can't harm him. So he said, okay, I'm not going to harm him. I'm just going to hold on him tight. But I'm not even going to do anything to him because I wasn't allowed to. And Yaakov didn't understand why he's holding on to me. And he was trying to move up. And while they were, he was struggling to get away, because he was uh, moving and struggling with him, that's why he got injured. That means as he's trying to escape the angels holding him, the angels just holding him, wasn't hurting him at all. But while he was trying to escape, he hurt himself. That means he, from the fear of his own fear, that's what caused him damage. But really, if a person has no fear, okay, I'm not scared. God is with me, I'll be protected. But when he gets scared, that's when it comes to danger. And what happened over there? He really wasn't he was just touching him. He was holding on. As you're trying to get away, that's when you get injured. So if you, if you feel Hashem's holding on to you, okay, it's Hashem's holding on to me. I've got enemies. I've got these things. I need to deal with it. But let's stay calm. God's with me. I'm not alone. This is what you have to remember. You are never alone. A Jew is never alone. You're always with God is with you. You have never to be scared. There's no concept. When you are alone, God is with you alone. And when you're not fear, because God is with me. And then no enemies can touch you. And that's how we answered the, that, that question now. So now, why is Alot Shacha? Why is that the deadline? So the night represents the darkness, which is Hester Panim, when the face is hidden. And we say, At night is when you don't see God, when you need emuna, You need faith. Baboker, when everything's going good, and you see God, you say, Ah, oh, Baruch Hashem, everything's good, everything's bright. That's morning, because it's daylight. You see, so you see God. But at night time, Things are going difficult, things are going bad, and you ask, where, where is Hashem? That emunat chabelelot, that's when you need to bring up your emuna. No, I believe. I call from a Kaddish Baruch Hu, I call it Tova, everything's for a reason, everything's for a purpose. And that's why, at the end of the night, when it gets the darkest, that's right before the dawn. That is the time where the angel gets Yaakov on his thigh, as the sun is rising, just before the dawn. And that's what we know, the, the darkest part of the night is before the daylight. It's K'mar Chevle Leida. We're now in long galut. And this, this is now difficult times where we, we, we're confined, we're in our, our own homes. Uh, we don't know what's going to be in the future. It's uncertainty. We don't know what's going to be financially, what's going to be medically, it's going to be with the children, children going to school, not going to school, have a job, don't have a job. Buy a house, not to buy, sell, not to sell. Nobody knows. But we're not alone. This is the end of long Golot where we see Hester Panim, that God is hidden. We just have to lift up the mask and see in it, Daddy, it's you. That is the Nisayon of the Galut, of the, is Emunah. At the end of the Galut, we're going to have challenges of Emunah. And I always hear from my wife, from her a teacher, Rav Yosef, he always used to say a mashal. Chevlei Mashiach, why is it called Chevlei Mashiach? When before Mashiach comes, it's going to be like a Chevel. What does Chevel mean? Chevel is a rope. Okay? So you have all the Jewish people holding on to the rope. All those who believe in the Kadosh Baruch Hu, they're going to hold on. But I said Hashem is going to shake the rope. Now, whoever's holding on and loose is going to fall off. Whoever's going to hold on tight, he's going to remain. So everyone wanted to remain till the end. Just hold on tight to the to the heaven. Just wait till the noon. Just hold on until the bokeh. When the bokeh is going, then Hashem is going to come out. We're going to see Hashem is going to be revealed. What was all the goodness in, in, in changing the whole world? What happened here? You know, why is there no Bemshala in Israel, in America? Everything's turning upside down, all the politics. There's no trust in any government or in any 
health uh, the even organization what people don't trust anything and we hold on to the Imona. We'll see at the end that everything was for a good reason. Everything was for a good purpose. That's the end of the night. So now let's go back and see how we've answered all the questions. So we asked question number one, what's Vayara and Vayetzer? So we said, what does it mean? He feared, he feared of Aisav and he felt Vayetzer, he felt distressed. Why am I fearing Aisav Adam? I should only fear God. That's it. Why was he afraid if Hashem told him I'll protect you? He said, I was afraid from the mitzvot of Esav. Why didn't Hashem protect him? He said, Hashem did protect him. But he himself, when he was afraid, that's what gave him, that's what made him lose. We said, how do you fight a malach? How do you fight any enemy? When you just think about Hashem before, before you. When you see Hashem, there's no enemies. There's only Hashem. And that's why Hashem did protect him. And that's why he wasn't allowed the angel to touch him. And according to the push, we said he was only allowed to touch him, but not to hurt him. And when he moved out of his way from his own fear, that's what made him get injured. And that's what we only we need to remember that. You know, we're, we're not to fear, only see a God and don't move around too much. When you see Hashem is holding you, so just flow with Hashem. Don't try and fight too much. Why does it say, Peniel? Did he see God or did he see an angel? He said, yeah. He fought the angel, but how did he fight the angel? By seeing God. That's why he, the angel saw that he can't fight him. He can't be him. You're always with God. That's why he's called Israel. Look at the Lashon of the Pasuk. Because you overcome, not you overcome against God. With God. How are you victorious? With God. What is the secret of Am Israel? Because we are with. Yisar, we, we are overcome, we are victorious, we are matzliach with Kel, with Hashem, with Elohim. Israel, we are only victorious with Hashem. Kisarita im Elohim. That's how we are matzliach. And that's why he called it Peniel, because he saw God face to face. Why is it the two, two sections of Vayiga, Bakaf, and Vatit Teka, Bakaf, which he explained? He held on to him. He was trying to move around and he injured himself. That's why it doesn't say Vayitka. He didn't punch him, he didn't attack him. He moved down, he injured himself. So we have to be careful when Hashem's holding us not to move around like that. Why does he say Adalot Hashacha? So we explain us the analogy of Masavotsiman uh, Labanim through this whole galut of the darkness where we don't see Hashem clearly. That's the Nisayon. The challenge is to see God at night. Everyone can see God in the day. Man, when it's beautiful, you're getting married, and thank God, money is good, and you have children, everything is bracha. When things are going difficultly, where do you see Hashem? That's where you have to find. That's the challenge. That's the fight. And then, why can't we eat it? Why can't we eat the kid and Hashem? Why is that the memorability? Why can we have like a, a, a hug of eating uh, special foods? Can anyone answer that question now? And I think it should be obvious to all of us. If that is really the, the success for our history, why we are called Israel. So we need to remember that. This is our identity. How did we win? Because we were with God. And how did he get the injury? Because for a moment or when he was lacking and he didn't see God the whole time, that's how he got injured. When he was feared. He feared and he tried to struggle out of place. That's what we want to remember. Like Mayor was saying, we want to grow from that. We need to remember this kid in Nasha is when he stopped thinking about God. No, only think about God the whole time. That is how we are victorious. And number 10, what do we care? What's the change for us? What do we have to learn from it? What's the lesson? So there's a few lessons. Lesson of the Sgula of Enod Milvado. Not to fear, because God is always with me. We're never alone. Lesson number two, that the fear alone, the pacha that itself, that can, that can be mazikas, that can cause us damage. Just the fear. And the end of the geula is emunah. We have to remember who we are. We are Yisrael because we are with God the whole time. That's how we win, and that's how we fight, fight with Hanukkah. And that's the message that we have from here, from the parasha of Yaakov and the parasha from the Kohanim. That they went with Makabim, with emunah bitachon in Hashem. They believed in Hashem, like the Kohanim, 
going with the bitachon. And when we do that, we have nothing to fear and nothing to face. And we hold on strong onto the chevel, the chevel Mashiach, who will be able to see Bezat Hashem, and Hashem Amen. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you yourself for joining us. Yeah. Um, maybe we're going to do a few minutes just a short halachot of Hanukkah. Everyone's welcome to, to join us. If uh, maybe you want to do the recording.